Wow. <laughs> I'm uh, almost lost for words with, with that ending. And um, probably for good reason, because United have been shite in penalty shootouts recently. And there's a, a big stat. 6% of all penalty shootouts are won by the team that scores the first goal. That takes into account you know, whether you take the first penalty or you take the second penalty, even if they score. It's the team that scores the first goal massively, massively outweighs. That's one of the reasons why people are going to the ABBA penalties, because scoring the first goal adds so much pressure to the second scorer. Um, but come off the hour, come off the ice, man. And I think it was very fitting that Victor Lindelof scored the winning penalty for Manchester United because the narrative of today's game was how good Victor Lindelof has looked being Manchester United's sole centre centre half on the pitch, yes, Luke Shaw was playing centre half, but he is not a centre half. Did a decent job, but isn't a centre half. Victor Lindelof looks better alongside a left back playing centre half than he looks alongside Harry Maguire. And today he had a genuinely good performance, certainly a good enough performance. We go, this guy needs to stay at the club and be our backup centre half for whoever it is. You know, when Martinez gets suspended and, and Varane gets injured, that's the guy that steps in because his performance today was assured, it was commanding. And United were the second best team in this. Um, I mentioned on Twitter, back end of the game, we are looking for a moment of magic from a single player. We've been sloppy. We haven't looked amazing. We've, we have been sloppy. We've, we look like what we are, which is a tired team with a ton of second string players trying to do their best. But we're in another final. Another Wembley final for Manchester United. Does it ease the disappointment of Thursday night? Not really, if I'm being honest. Because Manchester City is a ser serious proposition that awaits us. Now, Manchester City have got an absolutely banana season. And they could be trying to beat us in the FA Cup final with two extremes. They could be using the FA Cup final to complete an as-yet-unprecedented treble, which terrifies me. Or they could be using the FA Cup final to lift the one trophy that they're still able to win this season because they could still bollocks up the league. They could still crash out of the Champions League. And Pep Guardiola, after signing probably the best available player in world football in Erling Haaland, could come second to everyone. It sets up some fascinating narratives as we're going to go into this. And where do you even begin to sort of dissect that performance? Again, everyone, it was it was sloppy. Got to give Brighton their credit. They're a hell of a team. The fact that they pushed us so hard, hell of a team. If you watch my preview, pretty much everything we said was going to happen in the preview happened. I don't think there was as good passing out the back as we've seen from them. Maybe because United's press seemed to want to sit more in a bit of a mid-block than it did want to get after them and get drawn into the box. You didn't really see that happening from United. United sort of said, no, nah, about the middle third of the pitch, we'll, we'll start there and we'll see, we'll see how it goes from there. Um, and you could see with the substitutions that we were making that there were players just absolutely running out of gas all over the pitch. Um I don't know if this is the first ever Manchester City versus Manchester United final. I can tell you this. It's going to be absolutely disgusting. It's going to be a game that is horrible. <laughs> There's no two ways around it. It's going to be absolutely horrible. Um, a couple of people that reckon that Sancho has been very good today. I'm not 100% sure. Um, also, it's 53, 54 games, that would have been to the 37 that Brighton have played this season. Makes an enormous difference playing that more. Um, you know, a lack of squad depth that the manager can trust. Big. It, it's big that you don't have enough players in there that you can actually trust. I think it's huge. Um, I, yeah, I, Look, I can't... It was, it was a fairly disappointing performance from United's point of view in terms of the actual 120 minutes. But I think that shows some serious steel and some serious bollocks. Flawless with the penalties. Absolutely flawless with the penalties. Required them to miss one for us to advance, obviously. But fair play to United. This deep, 
this many games played, some absolutely sensational penalties, some sensational penalties. I, it, it just makes me excited. Look, even if we fall at the final hurdle, pun intended, even if we fall at the final hurdle now with Manchester City, what has, this team has achieved this season cannot be ignored. The number of games that they've partaken in, we have gone the distance in both cup competitions. We've come away with one trophy. You're coming first or second in the other, and you're probably coming third in the league. With a squad that absolutely shit the bed last season and some very key injuries to some big players at the wrong times this season and suspensions, we are not a million miles away. I think a, a key bit of recruitment for us across the summer, a little bit more luck next year with injuries and suspensions, and this Manchester United side will be a problem going forward. I, I genuinely believe that. We get out of that stupid Thursday-Sunday sort of rotation. We start getting back to some Champions League football. That might even help recruitment a little bit this season. And who knows? Do you know what? It's a final. What happened with City this season? Well, they absolutely tated us at their place. But we beat them at ours. And I think Eric Ten Hag learns. Now, whether or not he's got his full quota of players available to him, Probably not, yeah? He's going to have to do with a makeshift defence. But if it is Luke Shaw and Victor Lindelof that are lining up against Manchester City in the FA Cup final a month from now, I'll be all right with that. And I think if you can get that same midfield that started today back out again, I think you've got a shot. The problem that I think you've got to look at is Manchester City and Brighton dominate the ball to a similar degree. It's not the same but there's similarities in the way both of them sort of hold the ball. Uh, and Manchester City are a hell of a lot more patient. They're, Brighton are a tiny bit more direct. In fact, probably a lot more direct in the final third. Manchester City are better quality, but they also are a lot more patient as well. And, and sometimes I think that patience slowly works its way up the pitch and makes it way more vulnerable on the counter. And the fact that Manchester City have been playing like a quartet of centre-halves to sort of make this evolution that Pep's wanting to see in their back line, it's still got flaws. And Manchester City are on a, a sensational run of form at the moment. But as you know, cup finals generally a goal or two in them. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the cup final go a similar way. I think United could take City all the way the distance. And... We have to be real about this. It's going to have to be a counter-attacking game. United don't have the capability at the moment to say to City, we're going to dominate the ball. Watch this, fuckers. We're just not there yet. But we do have the assets that can hit them on the counter. And I think we can get Anthony back into some sort of form on the right-hand side. I think he's an asset. And I think Marcus is your big asset. And I think Marcus has got a big, big game in him this season. It's gone so well for him. That's what you've got to put your money on. You've got to go all in on him. And I actually wouldn't be I wouldn't be upset, you know, if he went with Bruno off the right and maybe Sabitza in the 10, Ericsson and Casemiro. Have some ball players that can actually find someone and actually maybe look after the ball a little bit better when we do get it. Another final book for Eric Ten Hag. It's literally only the Europa League and we, we took that to the end of April where we fell earlier than we should have done. The result with Spurs and Newcastle is a big positive. I think that means that we're probably not finishing below fourth um, outside of a major, major collapse, like a Spurs first half this afternoon kind of collapse. Um, but yeah, we did it. We're in the final. And it, it's hard to get too excited because Manchester City are a very scary prospect in that final. But we're in a final. So let's enjoy it. Another day out at Wembley. See you in the next one.